What are we doing? Free fall. We define free fall as an object falling exclusively under the influence or force of gravity. This could be something as simple as a rock falling. A rocket, however, not in free fall. It's in the air, but there's thrust acting upward on it, not free fall. A similar thing goes for an airplane. An airplane is in the air, and when it's flying correctly, there's lift from the wings upward, not free fall. A skydiver falling. If we ignore the air resistance, then they are in fact in free fall. Unless, of course, they've got a parachute. Even things moving upward, like an arrow, can be in free fall. The arrow is in free fall on the way up, still in free fall on the way back down. Alright, now let's take a look at the Earth. Acceleration due to gravity on the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. Well, it's actually 9.8065 but we don't worry about those 065. 9.8 is just an average. It's an average because the Earth is actually a different distance this way than it is this way. The acceleration due to gravity of 9.8 meters per second squared is always pointed toward the center of the Earth. Farther away, the acceleration due to gravity is less, but we'll worry about that later. On the Moon, the acceleration due to gravity is 1.6 meters per second squared. And on the sun, is 274. But don't worry about that. It's too hot to get there anyway. Let's take a look at some examples to see how to apply the kinematic equations to free fall. All right, let's start with a guy standing on top of a cliff. Now this person's going to drop a block. off the top of this 15 meter high cliff. That block's gonna fall all the way down into the water. What we're gonna solve for in this problem is the velocity which the block is traveling when it strikes the water. We're also gonna figure out how long it takes the block to land. Now realize this block is in free fall. So the entire time it's moving from the top of the cliff to the bottom, it's accelerating downward at 9.8 meters per second squared. So just like usual, we're gonna set up our five kinematic variables. Looking at the displacement, we know the block is gonna move down 15 meters. So we can say the displacement is 15 meters, but in any free fall problem, we're gonna adopt a convention that up is positive. I know in this problem that maybe doesn't make sense because the block is accelerating downward and moving downward, but we're gonna stick with this convention. And if we say up is positive, that means the displacement as the block moves downward is negative. Now this block is simply being dropped from rest. That means the initial velocity is zero. We're trying to solve for the final velocity as well as the time and we know the acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared. And remember, that's downward, which is going to make this negative. Once we have our five kinematic variables, we can take these values and plug them into the correct kinematic equations. So first, let's choose the correct kinematic equation to solve for VF. We're going to plug in our values. and solve the problem. Now there's a catch. Anytime we take the square root of a number, the result can be either positive or negative. And in this problem, we have to think about whether or not this final velocity should be a positive value or a negative value. Realize when the block strikes the water, it's moving downward. That means this 17.1 meters per second should be negative. Next, we solve for time. And we find it takes 1.75 seconds for the block to strike the water. <laughs> 
To better understand what's going on here, let's make some graphs. First, looking at velocity versus time. We know the initial velocity of the block is zero, and we know it's going to have a steadily decreasing velocity. So the fact of the matter is, if we were to graph the velocity versus time, it's entirely going to be negative. So we're actually going to put zero up here. The velocity is going to be steadily decreasing after 1.75 seconds the velocity is going to be negative 17.1 meters per second in order to graph the position versus time we need to know where the initial position of the block is if we say the water line is a height of zero that means the block is starting at a position of positive 15 and as time goes, goes on, it's going to fall downward. It's starting at rest and accelerating in the negative direction. This is going to take 1.75 seconds. If we were to say the top of the cliff was a height of zero, we'd actually be starting here, and our graph would curve down this way, off the page. All right, in this problem, we're going to have an archer fire an arrow straight up in the air. Now, our archer is going to fire this arrow up in the air at an initial speed of 50 meters per second. The arrow is going to go straight up in the air, turn around, and fall all the way back down. Now, we want to say that this arrow starts and finishes at the same height. So we're gonna say this arrow was fired from in some kind of pit. Why the archer's standing in a pit, I, I don't care. You can make up your own cute little story for that. <laughs> we want the arrow to start and finish at the same height. That's the important part here. Now realize, as soon as this arrow is fired, it's in free fall. Even though it's moving upward, it's in free fall. So that means the whole way up and the whole way down it's accelerating at 9.8 meters per second squared downward. What we're going to do in this problem is solve for two things. The maximum height the arrow reaches above the ground, as well as the total time the arrow spends in the air. First, we're going to solve for the maximum height. To do this, we're going to lay out our five kinematic variables. Using the values given to us in the problem, we're going to try to substitute those in to our variables. The displacement is simply going to be the maximum height. If we're trying to look for how far the arrow goes upward, that is in fact going to be the displacement. The initial velocity, that's the speed at which the arrow was fired, that's 50 meters per second upward. We don't know our final velocity, and our acceleration is 9.8 meters per second squared, but we have to be careful here. Anytime we're dealing with free fall, we say upward is positive. That means this acceleration of 9.8 meters per second squared is negative. You'll see, we only know two of the five kinematic variables, so there must be something that we're missing in this problem. And the answer to what we're missing lies in the graphs. So let's graph the velocity versus time for this arrow while it's in the air. The arrow is going to be fired from the bow at 50 meters per second. And we know with every second that goes by, the velocity of the arrow is going to decrease by 9.8 meters per second. So what this will look like on our graph is a diagonal line with a constant negative slope of 50 meters per second. When the velocity is positive, that means the arrow is moving upward. When the velocity is negative, that means the arrow is moving downward. And you'll see there's a point right here where the velocity is zero. Before this point in time, the arrow was moving upward. After this point in time, the arrow is moving downward. So the fact is, at the maximum height the arrow reaches, the velocity is zero. So if we're trying to solve for the maximum height, we're going to say the final velocity is zero. Using our graphing rules, we can see this in a different way by looking at the position versus time graph. 
Remember, the magnitude of velocity is equal to the slope of position. So when we look at our position versus time graph, what we should see is an initial steep slope leveling off to zero and then becoming increasingly negative. This is simply an upside down parabola. The maximum height, which we're trying to solve for, corresponds to when the velocity, the instantaneous velocity, is zero. So let's choose the correct kinematic equation and solve for the maximum height. Here we find the maximum height the arrow reaches above the ground is 128 meters. Next, we're going to solve for the total time the arrow spends in the air. To do this, we're again going to lay out our five kinematic variables. We need to set up a new set of kinematic variables because you'll notice the arrow going from here to here, that is from when it is fired until it lands, spends more time in the air than simply on its trip up. Whenever we're dealing with different periods of time, we have to set up new sets of kinematic variables. So because the arrow is traveling up and down over a different period of time than simply up, we need to set up a new set of kinematic variables. In this problem, our displacement from start to finish is zero. The initial velocity is 50 meters per second. We don't know the final velocity, and the acceleration is negative 9.8. We're trying to solve for the time the arrow is going to spend in the air. So choose the correct kinematic equation. Substitute our values in. And we find the time is 10.19 seconds. We're going to start with the person on top of a cliff, and this person's going to throw a block straight upward. You know what? Blocks are boring. Let's give him a sword. Swords are cool. But why is this guy holding a sword? We need a pirate. Nice. You know, maybe he needs a lightsaber instead. That'd be better. Of course, that means we need this guy. You know what? Let's do this right. We're going to have this person throw a shark upward off a cliff. <laughs> So this person's gonna throw their shark up in the air at 15 meters per second. The shark's gonna go straight up in the air, turn around and come back down. The shark is gonna land in the water down here. Realize this cliff is 30 meters tall. In this problem, we're gonna calculate several things. The first thing we wanna know is the maximum height the shark is gonna reach above the water. Then we're going to solve for how fast the shark is going when it lands in the water, as well as the total time the shark spends in the air. First, let's go through and find the maximum height the shark reaches above the water. To do this, we're going to lay out our five kinematic variables. We're going to take the values given to us in this problem and place them here in our kinematic variables. We're looking for the upward displacement, knowing the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. Realize when the shark gets to its highest point, its velocity is going to be zero. So we're going to say the final velocity is zero. Yes, I know the shark is going to be traveling at some non-zero velocity when it lands in the water. But we only want to look at the motion of the shark from when it's thrown upward to when it hits its highest point. The entire time the shark is traveling upward, it's accelerating at 9.81 meters per second squared because we assume this shark is being thrown upward on Earth. Now realize, if we're saying up is positive, as we always do, then this 9.81 meters per second squared is negative. So we're going to choose the correct kinematic equation. Once we have our kinematic equation, we're going to plug our values into that function. 
we find the displacement in this case is 11.5 meters upward. Realize that it is not the maximum height the shark will reach above the water. That is the displacement from when the shark is thrown until it reaches its maximum height. So if we want to solve for the maximum height, we need to add these 11.5 meters to the height of the cliff. Now that we have the maximum height, we're going to solve for the final velocity as well as the total time the shark spends in the air. Realize when we solve for the maximum height, we're only looking at the period of time while the shark is moving upward. Now we're going to look at the period of time from when the shark is thrown until it lands in the water. Because this is a different period of time, we need to set up a new set of kinematic variables. Now from start to finish, the displacement of the shark is going to be 30 meters downward. So for our displacement, we'll put in negative 30 meters. It's negative because it's down. The initial velocity is a positive 15 meters per second. It's positive because the shark was thrown up. We're trying to solve for our final velocity. We know the acceleration was negative 9.81 meters per second squared. And this time is in fact the total time which we're trying to solve for. So we'll solve for these two variables, Vf and T, and we'll have everything we're trying to solve for in this problem. First, let's solve for final velocity. To do this, we'll choose the correct kinematic equation. We'll substitute in our values. And we'll solve the problem. Realize when we take the square root of 813, we'll get a value of 28.5. This 28.5 meters per second can be either positive or negative. Anytime you take the square root of a number, the answer is either positive or negative. We have to decide what the sign of this velocity is. In this case, because we know the shark is moving downward when it lands, we know the sign of this number needs to be negative. So when the shark lands, it's traveling downward at 28.5 meters per second. Next, let's solve for time. We find the total time is 4.4 seconds. Again, if we find this time comes out to be a negative value, we've done something wrong. <laughs> 